Zion Williamson, Julius Randle, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Marcus Smart, Kyrie Irving. Is this next season's All-Star team? Nope, this is just a brief list of players who missed significant amount of time in the rookie seasons due to one thing, injuries. All right, let's dive in. This week we have a really interesting topic. I'm looking at why do these rookies, these guys with so much talent, why do they keep getting hurt in their rookie seasons? We spoke with Kyle Guy of the Sacramento Kings about this. I don't have the exact science behind why people are getting hurt, especially young guys. I mean, I know for a fact the past two and a half years is probably just from COVID and, you know, we had to stop for however long and then come back for 50 days in a bubble. You know, like that kind of stuff, I, I definitely see as to why people are getting hurt. The NBA is the premier basketball competition in the world. Do you know how hard it is to even get a spot on the bench of an NBA team? That basically means that most teams 12th man could basically slice up any random person on the planet. Any pickup game, he'd be the best player out there. He's also probably the best player on whatever team he was on before joining the NBA. So if that means coming from college or an overseas team, stepping into the NBA, that's still a massive step because the competition is so serious. The intensity is just that more extreme. And that gap can lead to injuries. In fact, there are four major factors, according to a 2015 article in ESPN by Baxter Holmes, that leads to injuries for NBA rookies. We're talking lack of sleep, too much basketball too young, specialized trainings that can backfire, and basically replacing milk with sugary drinks like Coca-Cola and stuff like that. From my understanding, the take care of your body, the, the less injuries you're gonna have, so. All right, so sleep is crucial to recovery. When you're young, you can play all day and all night, but the older you get, your body needs more sleep, especially from the ages of 18 to 25. In the NBA, you have things like long flights, back-to-back -back games, high-intensity atmospheres. All these things can lead to losing sleep. And then, of course, there's things like technology. You also got video games, mobile phones. These things wake your brains up. We're talking about the blue light that they emit. Basically, young players got to learn how to manage this technology so that their brains can rest at night. This is especially pertinent, as I said, for players aged 18 to 25 because that's where the sleep is deeper than it is for older people. All right, Kobe Bryant, got his jersey back there. He was clearly a beast, but the legend around him was of someone who is always working, right? He's always having these stories about how he's training at four o'clock in the morning, calling his trainers at crazy times. But this can lead to two problems. One is that young players are racking up way too much impact on their bones at a young age. And guys who have put so many miles on their tires during youth basketball days and through all those tournaments, and then the traditional route is to go the NCAA route, university basketball, where they're playing 30 to 40 high impact games in a season. And then they go up to the professional level where they double that. That's just how the body's made. It's not as durable for, you know, 500 games in four years, you know what I mean? So. This can lead to injuries when they're older because they're just worn down. It's wear and tear. Load management's a real thing these days, and some people don't agree with it, but you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's keeping these guys healthy, you know? But today, players are also mistraining. That means they're out there trying to do specialized training rather than a more balanced workout. These specialized kind of trendy training things may not give certain muscles, bones, and ligaments as much strength as they need. There are NBA trainers on record saying that a lot of trends are coming into the league and that players want to follow these new trends because they want to you know, kind of hack it and figure out how to be the best player they can be, but that some of these trends can be detrimental. Now, some trainers and coaches will actually listen to the players because the thing is, players are kingmakers today. So if they don't listen to the players, there's a possibility that the players could turn on them or, or just pick another trainer. If teams get it wrong, they're going to say, oh, if we zigged instead of zag, perhaps Zion would have been healthy, or perhaps Ben Simmons would have been healthy, or Joel Embiid, and you can go on your all-star team of guys who missed time in the early parts of their careers. So teams themselves are starting to figure it out, but I, I think that is a factor that it is just an arduous game. These are big bodies, high-level athletes, it's a jumping sport, a lot of fragile joints and uh, ways to land awkwardly, and that's, that's where you see the injury uptick for, for young stars. All right, so here's Justin's case. Basically, NBA rookies are getting hurt a lot because modern sports medicine is helping athletes compete at just really absurd levels. 
That means that every aspect of an athlete's body and mind is optimized. And in a lot of ways, it means that if a part of their body or mind is not operating at that high level, it can be dangerous. Is this a good thing for basketball? Well, it's probably making us enjoy superhuman feats on the court. It's keeping LeBron going at an elite level, while normally he'd probably have retired by now or be, you know, a bench player. It's helping things like crazy dunks happen. dribbles, blocks, you're seeing the gamut of just amazing plays. You look at LeBron and I think he's, he's a great example. Yes, he's played 18, 19 seasons, but then you throw on the more than 250 playoff games that he's played. That's an additional three plus seasons on a guy who, since he's been eight or nine years old, has been playing year round. And those playoff minutes, those three extra years, those are all 35 to 40 minutes a game. Those are high intensity, short turnaround, traveling Cleveland to Golden State and back. But LeBron's a guy and, and his fitness, you know, even, even with a high ankle sprain this season notwithstanding, has been largely unmatched in his durability. And that's because he himself invests seven figures US dollars annually in keeping himself fit. But to me, there has to be a breaking point. Anybody would love to play in the NBA, right? But asking these young men to put their bodies on the line so many times during their career, it gets to be a bit excessive. Pushing the human body to its physical limit, the burden for that, I would hope, would shift from the individual player to the team. And, and again, teams don't want their players to lack fitness, so there is incentive there. I think more and more, rookies will be training earlier to avoid NBA injuries. But I think we should also be asking, is this good for players? What will happen post NBA? Will injuries start to happen before they even reach the NBA? Anyway, that's my take, but I wanna hear yours. Drop a line in the comments below and let me know what you think about rookie injuries.